Brochers. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Julie and I'm the owner here at Broche Ballet. We are a virtual ballet school for adults. So what that means is you can take live Zoom class, on-demand ballet class, and pre-recorded video courses with us any time of the day. Today we are talking about your very first ballet class what to expect. So you've never taken ballet, maybe you've never even taken dance before, but you've always had the urge to do it. We're talking today about what to expect. Before we do, please do hit that like button down there, subscribe while you're at it, it does help us out. All right, so today we are gonna be talking about what you should expect when you get into the studio for ballet class. It's a great time to start thinking about this. You can take ballet class at home. You can supplement it with in-studio classes when they do start reopening again in the future. So if you are getting started with ballet right now, that is awesome. Let's talk about what to expect when you get in the studio. I am standing at my makeshift bar here. In the studio, there are gonna be long pipes. Sometimes they're attached to the wall and sometimes they're freestanding bars within the studio. Now, typically when classes are starting, the dancers are kind of filing into the class, everyone picks their spot at the bar. So how you pick your spot at the bar? If you are brand new to ballet, I highly recommend that you think about standing in the middle of a bar. So if there's a row of bars, don't stand at the end because then on one of the sides, you're gonna have to be looking at nothing and have no one to follow. So thinking about standing between people instead of at the end of the bar. Usually you want a good amount of space between you and the next person. So you have enough space to lift your leg and not kick them or bump them both front and back. So when we stand at the bar, some classes start facing the bar with two hands on the bar, but many classes start with just one hand on the bar. Now when we do start with one hand on the bar, we always start with our left hand on the bar. So where I am mirroring you, it's gonna look like the right hand if you're looking at me. So we would start in class with the left hand on the bar, so it's gonna look like this if you were following along with me directly. That means we start with the left hand on the bar because we use the right leg for the combinations first. So um, we start with that left hand on the bar always first. Um, if you're in a class with a bunch of people, they're all gonna know this already if it's not their first ballet class. And so they're gonna start this way and you're gonna feel a little silly if you end up facing the wrong way. Don't worry if you do, it happens to the best of us. But just so you know, we start with that left hand on the bar first. How close to stand to the bar? So right now I'm standing at a great distance from the bar. I want it to be far enough away that I have space between myself and the bar. So you can see my elbow is slightly bent. It's not lifted. It's not all the way bent where I'm like hugging the bar. It's just a nice, happy medium here, comfortable distance. We always wanna to try to maintain about this distance between us and the bar. So as you're finding your spot at the bar, look around and see what everyone has with them. Um, a lot of schools, uh, especially adult classes, will let you bring water with you to the bar, so you might set water with you. Just don't put it right next to your foot because you're probably gonna kick it while you're dancing. So put it at the end of the bar or where there's space, or if there's a wall bar, as far against the wall as you can so you don't kick it. Try to keep the space around your legs clear. Some people will let you bring a sweater or anything with you, but look around the room to see what everyone else has in the, actually in the studio on the dance floor with them. Every school is gonna have something different that they might expect uh, for you to do. Uh, the structure of how a ballet class works is that we have about eight to ten combinations that we do at the bar. There are different ways that we can move that we work on strengthening and building technique. We do that holding on to the bar. We do that so that we can take risks with our body and still feel the support of holding on so that we can use the correct muscles to engage the correct muscles. Um, sometimes if we do bar work without actually holding onto the bar, then the incorrect muscles will take over um, to try to save us from falling over. So if we have the uh, support of the bar, we can actually uh, work the correct muscles. Even if they're not strong enough to hold us all the way up yet, we have this support system to help us while we learn. Ultimately, when you dance on stage, we don't have the bar, but this is where we learn, develop strength, develop technique. So these exercises that we do at the bar are always the same. So we do plies, we do tendu, we do dégagé, we do rond de jambe, we do frappe, fondu, développé, and grand battement. Sometimes the teacher will throw in a bar stretch. Sometimes there'll be two tendus or two dégagés or something like that. But that's the general structure from your very first day all the way until you're a professional. You don't stop doing these same exact exercises. The thing is, you do them at a higher level, you do more complicated versions of them, you do them better, you perform them at a higher level, um, but you don't stop doing the same structure of a ballet class. 
Now the whole goal that we're trying to learn at the bar is that like, okay, so we're people, right? So our legs are facing forward generally. I mean, maybe they're a little in for some of us or a little out for some of us. But generally our motor pattern works like this, right? You pick up your quad, your knee bends facing the front and you put it down. You pick up your quad, you put it down in the front of you. Generally that's how our joints are, they move. That's how they naturally move. But in ballet, we need to move with our legs turned out. And so we need to learn how would you step with your leg turned out? How would you shift your weight from one leg to the other when they're facing the side of the room? How would you balance when your leg is turned out versus if you're just standing like a person and your leg is turned in? So when we're learning this, uh, what we're learning at the bar is learning all of the ways in which our body can move, but with our legs turned out. So we learn to bend, we learn to be on one leg, we learn to lift our leg, we learn to circle our leg, we learn to brush our leg, we learn all the ways that we can move our leg, but turned out. And believe it or not, this takes us a really long time to learn because our body doesn't really understand that. It understands this way of moving. It doesn't understand this way of moving. So we are teaching it at the bar. And so those eight exercises that I listed and sometimes 10 if they double up on combinations, those core exercises teach us all the fundamentals of how to move our legs in these different ways, but while well turned out. So we go through all those exercises. When we start the combinations, here's how it goes. The teacher will, will show you what they want you to do. So they will generally come over and take someone's spot at the bar. They'll come over and they'll stand at the bar so you can kind of watch and follow along and they will demonstrate for you what they want you to do. So they'll go through the whole combination, they'll demonstrate it, they'll talk you through it, they'll kind of show you what to expect, and then they'll maybe review it one or two more times, and then they will play music. So sometimes there's a live pianist, which is amazing and wonderful when you have that opportunity in your studio, but a lot of times it's recorded music. They will play the music and expect you to do the dance that they just gave you with the music. So they'll say, you know, they'll, they'll start the music and expect you to do it. So you'll start with your left hand on the bar again. You'll start in the starting position. You generally, once the teacher completes expl explanation, um, proper etiquette would say that you would show that you're ready by standing up really tall with your arm ready so that they know that you're ready and you get it and you get the combination. That's like your signal that you're ready to dance. So while the teacher is getting the music ready, you're showing that you're ready to dance. Then the music starts. The teacher is almost always gonna say the numbers five, six, seven, eight while the music is playing. What is that about? Okay, so in music, we count it. Every time the beat hits or there's a beat in the music, we count a number. So a beat would be like if you're clapping along at a concert, those, every time you clap is gonna be a beat. Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that, but let's just go with that. So every time you might feel like you wanted to clap, that would be one beat. So we count the beats. We count them in sets of eight. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, start over, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, one, two. So we count like that, whether it's slow or fast, we count in sets of eight generally. If you ask a musician, usually they count in sets of four, but as dancers, we count in sets of eight. So here we are counting in sets of eight. When the music starts, generally they give us four counts, four beats, again, where we clap. They give us four beats to kind of get the feeling of how fast the music is going, get the mood of the picture, prepare. Usually we take our arm and prepare it during the, the four counts. So during those four counts, because we want to be ready for count one, which is when things start, we say leading up to it, we go five, six, seven, eight. So as an example, let's say we're doing a plie combination, which is oftentimes the first one. We're here, we're ready for the teacher. The teacher is going to go five, Six, we're gonna get our arm out of the way. We're gonna bring it up first and open. That's gonna go on seven, eight. So it's gonna go five, six, seven, eight. Then the exercise will start on one, two, three, four. And we make one motion per count. Seven, eight, we might go one, two, down, up, five, six, seven, eight. So one motion per count of the music. Generally, that's kind of how things are structured. We do things in sets of eight as dancers, sometimes four, sometimes two, but they usually add up to a set of eight. So we do it on the first side, right? So I'm holding with my left hand. And then we complete the combination, the music finishes, oftentimes with like a balance, like there we're balancing up here, we're trying to find our balance and not fall over. We're up here, we come down and we finish. Then the teacher will say other side. And so what you typically do, is you turn around 
and then you do the other side. So now my right hand is on the bar and we're gonna use my left foot. So then there you do the same exact combination, but just facing the other way. So remember how I told you you wanted to be between people at the bar? This is why. Because if you're in front of someone but there's no one behind you, now you gotta turn around. And now there's no one here to watch. So you wanna think about being in between two people so that when we turn and do the other side, you can watch them. Now some studios, like uh, when we had our Denver studios here at Broche Ballet, we did uh, switch around the bar so that we could all look forward because those classes were very small and there wasn't always someone to follow. But in most traditional ballet studios, you're gonna actually turn and face the other side. Now if you're starting ballet online, typically what you'll do is pick up your bar or move it and bring it over to the other side. If your bar is immovable, then you might take your camera or your computer to the other side so you can watch from facing the other direction. You can of course turn around, but if you're at home, there's no one behind you to help you uh, and help you watch when you get to the other side. So we go through those eight exercises at the bar. Uh, again, sometimes it's 10, maybe sometimes it's six if some of them took a little longer. We go through all eight on both sides and then it's time for center. So sometimes between bar and center, the teacher will give you a little bit of a break to use the restroom, to stretch, to get some water, to move your things. During this break, uh, we need to clear the bars from the room out to the side. So you can look around and see what the other dancers are doing. They'll know the drill if they've been there before. You take the bar, you pick it up, maybe with the other dancers, uh, if it's a heavy bar with the help of the other dancers, and you move it to the side of the room. There's usually a place where they're stacked up, but you move the bars, and once the bars are all moved, then you can go about your business. But always clear the bars out first. That's the dancer's job to do. Um, customarily, it's often the gentleman's job to do that in class. In adult classes, we are sometimes not as lucky to have as many gentlemen, but often when we do have gentlemen in class, they will uh, pick up the bars and carry them to the side of the room. Then you have time on your own. You can stretch. Sometimes this is a little awkward if you don't know exactly what you're doing, so don't worry. Everyone in class is generally, especially in adult class, is super nice, so maybe strike up a conversation or maybe just kind of stay on the side of the room and, and take inventory of what's going on. So when we get to center, center uh, is how we call it when we're not using the bar. Center, because we're in the center of the room. Center work um, is a little bit less structured than what we have at the bar. It usually goes in a specific order. It usually goes a tondu with no bar, an adagio, that means something slow. Then we do um, a turning combination or a waltzing combination. Sometimes that travels or moves across the floor. Sometimes you start in one corner of the room and travel across the room to the other side. Then we do jumps. Um, not all classes will jump, but a lot of times you'll have jumps. So you do like a warm up jump, and then you do a petite allegra, which is like little jumps, and then you do a grand allegra, which is like big leaps across the floor and across the stage. So center, those, those are like families of combinations, but the actual combinations themselves can be incredibly varied throughout that. Um, to space yourself out, I do recommend that you find somewhere either in the middle or further in the back. Um, standing in the front uh, generally is um, a little bit more tricky, obviously, if you don't know exactly what you're doing. There are mirrors that you can follow along with people behind you, but it's a little harder to follow along through the mirror than if you're standing behind someone. So generally, it's appropriate to, especially if um, everyone's shy and no one wants to go to the front, so people sort of congregate towards the back of the room, it is appropriate to ask someone who looks like from the bar, like if you're looking around the room, maybe you'll notice someone who seemed like they know what was going on. You could go up to them and ask them like, excuse me, it's my first class. Can I please stand behind you in the center? And they'll generally move forward so you can stand behind them. Or if not, probably someone else will overhear you asking and be like, oh, I'd be more than happy to stand in the front. So it's always okay to ask if you can stand behind someone. The dancers in class are usually very, very nice and helpful. So we're in the center. Um, the first two combinations I mentioned, the tondo and adagio, happen with everyone together in the room. Sometimes the teacher will do two groups, um, in which case they'll usually help you split up into two groups. Uh, then half will just move and disperse to the back of the room around the edges of the room, and the other half will stay in the center of the room, do the combination, then they'll switch, and you'll come out to the center of the room, and they'll go to the back of the room. If it's a traveling combination, so I mentioned the, the waltz and the turn and the grand allegro, then you'll all sort of 
there'll be a couple people here ready to go and everyone else will be kind of lined up along the edges of the studio getting ready to go and you kind of as the groups go this can be really nerve-wracking um, actually as the groups are going you're kind of getting ready to get started yourself and you're kind of preparing your little group of dancers and and kind of jockeying for who's gonna be in the front and kind of getting the hang of all that together so there's a lot of there's a lot going on when you're waiting for your turn you're, you need to be kind of keeping an eye out and counting how many people are are in front of you so if it's groups of three and there's four people in front of you you know that there's one group that's going to go and then you're next and so you should start kind of coordinating with the two people near you like okay we're going to go together can i go in the back or you know you start planning all of that of course quietly because the dancers are dancing but you're going to want to start coordinating that in the back of the room at the very very end of class usually they'll invite everyone to come back out into the room and do a reverence that's usually a follow along where you just stand the music plays and you follow the teacher without really prior instruction usually that is just like a curtsy or a way to give thanks for the class thank the musician if there was one thank the other dancers thank yourself for making that time for yourself and uh, just kind of thank your teacher and uh, in the whole kind of ballet world. It's, it's a very, a very deep rooted tradition to conclude with a reverence. The last note that I will make here is that oftentimes in an adult drop-in or open class environment, uh, even if something is labeled beginner, oftentimes that can span many, many years of experience. So someone all the way from where you are, you've never danced before, all the way up until someone who's danced for several years or even danced a lot as a child and is coming back to the bar and needs a slower paced class and wouldn't start off in an advanced class. So beginner uh, in ballet doesn't always mean beginner as in it's your very first ballet class. So oftentimes when you walk in, the dancers do already know what's been going on. They've been coming week after week and have been starting to get the picture. So don't feel intimidated if it looks like you have no idea what's going on and everyone else has every idea of what's going on. Um, they have been doing it for a lot longer than you. No one is expected on their very, very, very first class to walk in and know what's going on. So be very, very kind to yourself when you walk into your very first class. Um, and know that uh, you're in an environment with people who've done these things before, they've seen these things before, and you'll figure it out too, just like they figured it out. But it can be a little bit intimidating at first to feel like you're the only one who doesn't know what's going on. Um, it's most likely not their first ballet class, but it is yours, so be kind and gentle with yourself. Now, if you are watching this video on YouTube, you're probably a researcher and are researching everything about ballet before you actually get started going. So I would recommend doing some studying about what's going on, maybe taking some classes at home, maybe practicing on YouTube, taking some classes, watching some videos, uh, studying the vocabulary a little bit, just so you can feel more comfortable when you're in class. This is definitely not a requirement. Most studios are very, very kind and welcoming when you do come in knowing absolutely nothing. That's how I I started. I started ballet in a beginner adult class knowing absolutely nothing um, and I just sort of fumbled my way through until things started making sense which is totally totally fine but if you're watching this I suspect that you want to know something before you get into your first ballet class and there's so many resources out there I'll put some in the description below um, for you to watch ballet classes at home start taking some classes and start familiarizing yourself with the environment before you get into a studio and even once you get into a studio you can keep supplementing that studio time with at-home practice that you can keep improving on your own in between classes. A lot of times these classes um, uh, are progressive and that it's the same people week after week, but sometimes you'll miss gaps or if you have been gone for a while, you'll miss some things. So you can really always supplement that with at-home practice. And now couldn't be a better time to practice at home. So dancers, I really hope this helps you work up the courage to start ballet, whether that is starting ballet at home or starting ballet in a studio. We here in the ballet world would love to have you. So until next time, take care.